before I actually expose in the plate, let's talk a little bit about wet plate exposure. Now, I'm recording this after I finished making the plate. Um, I didn't have enough time with the plate drying out to talk about this before we actually went out to the camera. So I'm recording it afterwards, but I'm going to show it to you before the exposure. The biggest mistake that I see beginning collodion photographers make, especially when they're starting on their own and there's no one there to tell them otherwise, is they just expose their plates for way too long. Uh, it's a really common thing that you'll see in the collodion forums or Facebook groups. Someone shows up with a plate that has a barely visible image on it and says, help, my plate is fogged. I think I have a light leak somewhere. And it turns out that there really wasn't any light leak except for the light leaking through your lens for the way too long period of time that you left it open. I think to a certain extent, um, us more experienced photographers are guilty of perpetrating this. We have a tendency to hype up what a slow process wet plate is. And it is slow compared to digital or film, but it's actually pretty fast compared to a medium like, say, daguerreotype, especially if we're talking about like an older iodine-only daguerreotype. The fact is, wet plate is not that slow, especially if you're shooting in, say, broad daylight. So if you're shooting outside, and I'm going to make this test shot outside, even though I typically work with strobes, I think this will be more applicable to most of my viewers. Shooting outside, I usually start with the Sunny 16 rule. And if I have fresh collodion, fresh chemistry, good developer, I assume that I'm going to be exposing for about ISO 1. That means one second at f16 in bright sunlight is kind of my starting point for exposure. And then I'll adjust from there if I'm in the shade or if it's a cloudy day, or of course if I want to change my aperture. Now in this particular image you're about to see, I exposed at f8 for one second because it's getting towards the end of the day here and we're also in the shade of some trees. That got me what I think was a pretty good exposure. If I were doing another, I would probably bump it up a little bit higher. But that's kind of the point. You use that ISO 1 Sunny 16 rule as your starting point, and it's probably going to get you close enough that you can tell if you're a little bit under or a little bit overexposed, and then you can adjust from there and get a good exposure. The problem you'll run into if you way overexpose is that it can be kind of hard to tell the difference between overexposure and underexposure when you're new to this because you just get a totally blank plate when you're totally overexposed. So what you don't want to do is go out there with some really fast f4 lens and expose for a minute or two minutes, which I've seen some people do. That's just going to blow your plate way out. Start with roughly one second at f16 in the sunlight as a guide guiding point, maybe a little bit slower if you're in, say, some northern or very southern latitudes where you get less sunlight, and then see where you can go from there. Now, I don't think it's especially useful to use a light meter if you're shooting collodion outdoors. There's two reasons for that. The first is that collodion is very difficult to strictly identify as a certain ISO equivalent of film because it has a different spectral sensitivity. Um, it's very sensitive to UV light and to blue light, but it is relatively non-sensitive, in, in fact, barely sensitive at all to red and some other colors on kind of that end of the spectrum, which is something that you'll see um, once you take a look at the image we're about to make. So you can't necessarily make a direct comparison from say, a light, meter, a light meter built for film, to wet plate. The other problem is that collodion ages quickly. So within a couple of days, between your collodion aging, you know, potentially your developer even aging over time, you're going to be getting different exposures. So if I'm shooting outdoors, I don't use a light meter. I just take a test shot. I try to get something that basically works and then I go from there. 
it's basically impossible to nail a first shot with collodion using a light meter because you just don't know where your collodion is going to come through on that particular day. Plus, you don't know how much, say, UV light might be getting blocked by the sky that day. So, outdoors, I don't use a light meter. If I'm shooting indoors with strobes, which is something that I'll probably do another detailed video about in the future, if anyone would find that interesting, I do use a light meter. Now, once again, it is impossible to accurately nail a first shot with a light meter, but that's not what I use it for. I use it first to get me in the neighborhood. So if I'm shooting, say, head and shoulders portrait on 8x10 with an f4 lens, I usually set my meter to ISO 3, and I try to get my lights metered to about f11. That's usually a good starting point for me. Then what I can do <coughs> is that I'm a little bit under or overexposed. I can adjust from there. I can find that meter reading that works, and then anytime I'm moving my lights around in that same session, that gives me the ability to nail the exact same light level that I had in that first shot that I knew worked for me. And of course, the other thing is that even if a light meter isn't giving you a super useful absolute value to use as your exposure, it's perfectly useful for determining relative values and nailing the ratios you want between your main light, your background lights, your rim lights, so on and so forth. So, light meters, totally useless outdoors, in my opinion, for collodion. Um, but if you are going to be shooting with strobes, I think it's a really great thing to have handy. And the big thing to watch out for if you're shooting your first place outside is just to not overexpose. Um, stick to Sunny 16, assume ISO 1 to begin with, and see where that gets you. So now, after that somewhat longer than intended spiel, Let's go outside and let's go ahead and expose our plate. Now we're here in my driveway where I've pulled out this random workbench to serve as a super boring test shot. Just because it's got some detail and a handful of different colors on it, which will help to show us how the collodion reacts to different wavelengths. Now I'm using a modern large format field camera here, so exposing this plate is going to be just like exposing a sheet of large format film. I'm going to close down the lens cock the shutter, load the plate holder into the camera, let it settle down, pull the dark slide, and then I'm just going to trigger the shutter. Put the dark slide back in, plate holder is now light tight, and that's all there is to that. Let's go back into the dark room and develop this plate. <laughs> 